Sophia's new bus lane. We're standing in traffic at this light. We've been here for like five minutes. And at the next light, the next light's rotation is five minutes. Six. Six minutes. And we'll probably have to stay there through three rotations, like last night, not rush hour or anything. There's one of the new green buses, that one, followed by the old one, or in front of it, the old one, and then there's another kind of old one, the old buses. The point is, these buses are obviously a good thing because look at all this traffic. We're standing in it because too many people have access to cars, or too many people want cars, or too many people need cars, but more people actually could take the bus lane, take the buses, if the one had more of those nice buses one day they might think about some AC. And then two, you have to link the middle class people into it. And you can't link middle class people into it without linking, uh, I guess, their composites, uh, um, an underclass to support them. So the middle class people, are, who the people who are buying all these cars, aren't gonna buy into these buses. Until, for example, there's a bicycle rickshaw. They can take them for, t for five or six or seven rupees from the two middle class neighborhoods that are just along that strip down there and bring them to this important uh, intersection that we're all sitting at. That would loosen up the traffic. We would use it. We would use it. We would use it. Other people would use it. Maybe more women would start to use it. They would be getting frisk on the bus, getting fresh. Anyway, I heard a report on BBC about these bus lanes, about these guys who had just, within 15 days of living in a village with 40 cars, 40, excuse me, not cars, auto-run vehicles, as in non-people run. Here we go, we go up on this. As a non-people run, here's the bus lane. Within 15 days, Rajesh was oh, right there, direct in traffic. He had two days of training, he said on that BBC report, and that qualified him to run along this traffic lane and instruct us people uh, who don't have, you know, significant skills in driving. I'm not going to say anything about anyone in particular, but um, just to say that, and where are people to cross this bus lane? Where would you cross? If there was a park on that side and a middle class neighborhood on that side which you either lived in or worked in, sleeping on somebody's floor or cooking with somebody or living there, whatever, teaching them music or dance, you're gonna cross right there. You're gonna cross in the middle, wherever it is wherever it is convenient. And only here only here at the bus depots do you actually have cow guards. <laughs> so the cows and the bulls can't cross and make the buses crash. There goes a human run cart, a bicycle, a motorcycle, and there's the second lane over there on the side, which is, there's another guy, human powered vehicles. This is one of my favorite parks, they have monkey bars. Um, but they have, even have a second lane over there for a vehicle like that blue one that basically has, how many cc's does that blue thing have? Could it run a motorcycle, uh, um, um, a lawnmower? <laughs> so you have all these vehicles. We, we haven't seen any oxen yet, but they're out there on these streets. So are camels, so are elephants, using this very road. And then there are people who live along this road. Hello, there they are, they're the blue tents. Live along this road, work along this road. How are you gonna make all these people relevant? And that's the question that I just want to see answered. That's my question. My question, Oprah. So we're coming, we're coming up over a, uh, a flyover. I like flyovers. Um, I think we call them something like Badock, where we come from, in the West End of Louisville. But here, there are people who live under Badock. <laughs> okay. Um, but just consider, really, that there are people who are running these streets that have just come to a city, but those people have jobs. And after all, it is a green city, look. There are trees everywhere. Look, there's even a police station. Oh, am I supposed to transmit police stations? And there's an underpass under a flyover. Three levels, and just one level up, one level down. There's the cheap Italian restaurant flavors. 
You're having a nice tour of Delhi, I'm saying. You're seeing an orange auto rickshaw. I've never seen one. It said UP. Wow, how did he get a license to drive in Delhi? What a nice color. So you're seeing a tour of South Delhi, heading north. Hi. Namaste. Day. <laughs> oh, and now on the other side, Delhi Metro construction. And that's Lajpat Nagar. And if you just go right down that street, that's where Time Out Delhi office is. About 10 doors down. So I come there a lot. And they're going to have a metro station here. It's going to link to Kanat Place. So that actually, haha, people like me, like I was saying, who would take a bicycle rickshaw like they have in Lajpat Nagar to the, um, to, the, to the bus stop that goes all the way north. And then... Wow, BRT Delhi, BRT Delhi, BRT Delhi. And then take the metro. This city could be so connected and so free of congestion. Look, bicycle rickshaws. There you go. There's a bicycle rickshaw right there in front of the in front of the bus station. It already exists. Slash Naga has it. Why don't Shirak Delhi and Pasha get some? And the government says they want to phase out this form of transportation. And I hear that in Calcutta they still they have people who actually do this by foot. This bicycle, this not a bicycle rickshaw, but literally someone walks barefoot. you barefoot, and literally someone walks you. Here comes another uh, flyover, but this one is different because there's always a jam on this one because there are all these people who here we go work on construction and never have been in a vehicle or would never own a vehicle, at least not now, not even with the nano coming out. So they don't drive in cars. They're in buses, if that might be on an ox. And they're creating, here it goes, diversions. <laughs> of course the construction workers have the most modern equipment. And they're all well trained in using that equipment. All of this is not to be confused, of course, with the new seven-star hotels that are, ooh, tomatoes, <laughs> that are coming up in this city. There is the newest one, seven stars, okay? Egg, dough, teen, job, Look. It's not that fly already, but look at all the people who are building it on the outside who live down there in the bottom under those tents. Can't even see them. We're not supposed to see them. And there's the church. Those people who are building it were never, like, don't even live in structures. You know what I mean? There's the Oberoi. Can you see it? Oh, look. There's Volkswagen. Germany. Number one car maker. And the people who get to see that, along with the time, temperature, and date, might be turning into the Overroy so they can go to Louis Vuitton and buy something. <laughs> Not in that rickshaw. <laughs> There's the Delhi police. You can get your tire fixed just outside. Okay, but this is what I'm saying. Oh, an ambassador. Um, but this is what I'm saying. Like the people who they 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 feed on each other. That's is that capitalism? Sure. Oh.